Hey guys, glad you're with us tonight. Glad you joined us. I uh, just want to take a few minutes and uh, share with you a little devotion and encourage you with God's Word. Also want to um, encourage you to continue to stay in the Word. Uh, continue to read it. Continue to apply it. Uh, there's no better time than right now to, uh, to be living out the Word of God uh, in your homes and in your communities. So I want to pray with you and then I want to get started in the devotion. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the ones that are gathered tonight. I thank you for each one to watch this video. Whether they're a member of Calvary or not, Father, I pray that it would, uh, your word would change lives, uh, make us different people, make us more like you. So, Father, bless uh, this time we have together. May you and you alone be glorified. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, I'm going to read in Luke 19, 28 through 40. And it says, After Jesus said this, he went ahead, uh, going up to Jerusalem, and he approached Bethage uh, and Bethany at the hill called Mount of Olives. And he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, say the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead found the colt, just as he told them. As they were untying it, the colt's owner asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their, clo their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. And as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. And when he came near to the place where the road goes down to Mount Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke that your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones are going to cry out. Listen, this Sunday is, is Palm Sunday, and, and uh, we're coming into the Easter season, and obviously this is not the way that we wanted to celebrate it. Uh, this is not how the church planned to celebrate it. Uh, but Easter's not canceled. All right? Easter's still, uh, we're still going to celebrate it. You'll celebrate it there in your home with your family. I'll celebrate it here uh, in our home with our family. You see, Jesus still paid for our sins. By dying on the cross and he rose from the grave and so we'll still celebrate what Jesus has done now how can we celebrate this season well we celebrate this season by making it a um, a season of praise now Palm Sunday is a day of celebration and joy Jesus rode into Jerusalem to a crowd uh, that was greeting him with praises and they were shouting Hosanna and waving palm branches and Matthew 21 says that Jesus had the whole city stirred up and the religious leaders were some of the ones that were unwilling to praise the Lord and matter of fact they were trying to tell the other ones tell Jesus to make them stop praising him and Jesus said listen if they stop the rocks are going to start crying out in praise and so I want to make sure that on this Palm Sunday in this Easter celebration uh, with all this going on that we don't forget to praise the Lord because listen I don't need a rock crying out in my spot and so we can make it a, a celebrate this season by praising the Lord and I want to encourage you I know right now it's a difficult time you know everything going on and, and maybe some things that are going on it don't have to be what's going on with the virus stuff it could be in your marriage it could be in your finances it could be uh, at your job it could be with your children whatever's going on I know there's a lot of circumstances that are going on and, and maybe you don't feel like praising or maybe you find it hard to praise the Lord. Well, I want to encourage you to look beyond your circumstances. And I want you to remember what God has done for you. I mean, He and, and all the promises that He's made for you. And that'll encourage you to praise the Lord. Now, as Christians, He has already solved our biggest problem. You and I had a debt that we could not pay. And Jesus paid for it with His life. That right there is praiseworthy. The Bible encourages in Isaiah 61, 3 to put on the garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. And so I encourage you, make this season, celebrate this season by making it a season of praise. Not only that, we can celebrate this season by making it a season of repentance and cleansing. After his triumphal entry, Jesus went to the temple in Jerusalem. And it was a center of Jewish worship. And it should have been a place for God's people to worship and offer sacrifices. 
Instead, he founded a marketplace where vendors were making money and they were taking advantage of God's people. And so the following day, Jesus returns to the temple, but this time he cleans it up. He restored the temple to a house of prayer. Now, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, let's ask ourselves whether this temple, the temple the Holy Spirit lives in, needs some cleansing. Ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts, revealing anything that He needs to clean up. And right now, you know, we're very sensitive um, to how clean our bodies are. I mean, we're washing our hands more than we ever have. We're bathing in Germex. Some of you might even be drinking it. We're concerned about cleanliness everywhere. But what about our heart? What is it that God wants us to, to be cleansed of? What is it in our life that God wants us to get rid of? You know, soaps and sanitizers, uh, they're going to wash the germs away. But only the blood of Jesus can cleanse us. So we can celebrate this season by making a season of praise. We can celebrate uh, by making a season of repentance and cleansing, but we also can celebrate this season by making it a season of recognizing God's perfect timing. On Palm Sunday, Jesus rode in victoriously on a donkey, fulfilling the prophecy and announcing that he was the Savior, Messiah, the soon coming King. And the city was filled with people preparing for the Passover. It was the perfect time for Jesus to fulfill the prophecy that we found in Zechariah. We find in Zechariah 9 9. It says, Rejoice, O people of Zion, shout and triumph. O people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey. The Jews were all in one place, and they all would have known this scripture, this Zechariah 9. God's timing was absolutely perfect to reveal who Jesus was to them. And God's timing is still perfect today. As Christians, we can base our lives on the fact that God is the God of perfect timing. And I want to encourage you, that let you know that you're not alone in whatever you're going through. You're not alone. God is aware of what you're going through in your life. And I bet you can look back on your life and you can remember times where God showed up just in time. And He got you through whatever it was. Well, He hasn't changed. He is still the God perfect timing and so we can celebrate by making a season of praise we can celebrate it by making a season of repentance and, and cleansing we can celebrate it by making it a season of remind, reminding ourselves that God is a God of perfect timing and we also can celebrate this season by making a season to give God what he needs and Jesus sent two of his disciples into the village and he uh, and he said find this tied up colt that no man had ridden and go get that untie it and bring it back and if anybody asks what you're doing uh, tell them that the Lord needs this. And the disciples obeyed, and, and the guy that owned the cult obviously obeyed. And so as we celebrate Palm Sunday, the question is, what's Jesus asking from us? What is it he needs from us? What does he need from you and from me to fulfill this part of his great plan he has for this world that we're living in? Is it your special talent? Maybe he's given you a talent and, and he wants you to use that to glorify him and to give it to him. Or maybe it's uh, your time. Maybe it's your career. <clears throat> or maybe it's, maybe it's your finances. But whatever he's asking for, don't hold back. Give it willingly just like the man that owned the cult. If the Lord needs if the Lord needs it and you give it, he'll do amazing things through it. A guy by the name of David Wilkerson wrote a book called The Cross and the Switchblade. And it tells how he was convicted by God to use his spare time in the evenings to start a ministry with street gangs. Now because David Wilkerson listened and obeyed and gave God what he needed, his time, this worldwide ministry of Teen Challenge was birthed. And it all happened because he responded to what God asked him to do. Let's make this season a season of celebration by making it a season of praise, a season of repentance and cleansing, 
a season of recognizing God's perfect timing and a season to give God what he's asking us to give. I love you. Uh, keep letting the Lord bring light to this dark world through you. Continue loving on your families and spending time with them. And uh, I love you and I will see you soon.